Welcome, beer enthusiasts, to our comprehensive guide on nitro beer. Today we're going to delve deep into the history, science, and unique brewing methods of this popular beverage, providing you with a wealth of knowledge on this fascinating topic. In the golden age of beer, we've seen an explosion of brewing techniques and ingredients. Brewers have been pushing boundaries, experimenting with a wide variety of ingredients and brewing techniques. They've been creating delicious barrel aged sours, pushing the haze craze into the stratosphere and challenging traditional brewing methods. Among these innovations, one that has stood the test of time and continues to win the hearts of beer lovers everywhere is the creamy, foamy, and visually appealing nitrogenated beers. For thousands of years, carbon dioxide was the only gas used in beer. It was a natural byproduct of the fermentation process and provided the fizziness that beer drinkers came to love. But in the 1950s and 60s, a new era dawned in the brewing industry. Brewers began to wonder if a great beer could be made with another gas. With the advent of metal kegs, the scene was set for a brewing gas revolution. The story of nitrogen in beer takes us back to the 1950s, a time of change and innovation in the brewing industry. Brewers were transitioning from wooden casks to metal kegs. This change was revolutionary. Metal kegs allowed brewers to keep their beer fizzy and fresh for much longer, leading to more consistent flavor and texture. The advent of metal kegs also opened the door for the use of different gases to carbonate beer. In 1959, Guinness, a name synonymous with quality beer, began marketing nitrogenated beer across the UK and Ireland. This was no ordinary marketing campaign. It was a celebration of their 200th anniversary, and they introduced what they called the Easy Service System. Guinness didn't invent nitrogenated beer, but they certainly popularized it. They made nitro taps accessible to pubs and bars across the Western world, forever changing the landscape of the beer industry. Nitrogenated beer is unique in its texture and foam. Nitrogen is 100 times less soluble in water than carbon dioxide. When combined with a special dispensing technology, it produces a multitude of tiny bubbles in the beer. This results in a beautiful cascading look when poured and a dense, creamy head that lasts much longer than carbonated beers. The creamy texture and unique appearance of nitro beers have made them popular with craft brewers and beer enthusiasts alike. However, producing nitro beer for cans or bottles is no easy task. It requires a significant investment into the complex science of creating a self-contained nitrogenated vessel. This process involves a lot of trial and error, and often the use of widgets to recreate the nitro tap experience in a bottle or can. The challenge lies in recreating the signature texture of nitrogenated beer out of a can or bottle, a process that is incredibly scientific and requires a deep understanding of the properties of nitrogen and how it interacts with beer. Now let's talk about how you can serve nitro beer at home. The equipment you'll need includes a nitro tap, a shank, a barbed fitting, a liquid line, a keg with a nitro keg lid, a gas line, a nitro beer regulator, and a tank of beer gas, which is a mixture of 70% nitrogen and 30% CO2. The process involves setting up the nitro tap system, connecting the gas line to the tank and regulator, and ensuring everything is sealed tight to prevent gas leakage. With the right setup and a bit of patience, you can recreate the nitro beer experience right in the comfort of your own home. Despite the popularity of nitro beers, it's important to note that they're not universally loved. Nitrogen creates a great texture that enhances many beers, but it can also mute some flavors like hot bitterness and lighter malt flavors. That's why you don't see a lot of IPAs on nitro. The different gas changes how the beers act on your tongue, and some drinkers even think that breweries can hide blander beers by putting them on nitro. To illustrate the difference between nitro and CO2 beers, we conducted a taste test using the same beer, half put on nitro, and the other half on CO2. The CO2 beer was more aromatic and had a sharper taste, while the nitro beer had a creamy mouthfeel and tended to accentuate malts and suppress the flavor of hops. The difference was significant enough that if blindfolded, one might think they were two different beers. In conclusion, whether you prefer nitro or CO2 beers comes down to personal preference. Each has its unique characteristics that can enhance or mute certain flavors in the beer. Nitro beers, with their creamy texture and unique appearance, have certainly carved out a niche in the beer world, and with the right equipment, you can even enjoy them at home. 
So the next time you're at your local craft brewery or setting up your home brewing system, why not give Nitro Beer a try? But remember, the world of beer is vast and diverse. There's always something new to discover, a new flavor to taste, a new technique to learn. Whether you're a seasoned beer enthusiast or a curious beginner, there's always room to expand your beer knowledge. So keep exploring, keep tasting, and most importantly, keep enjoying the wonderful world of beer.